Welcome to a lesson on the derivation of the variation of parameters formula to solve linear second order non-homogeneous differential equations. Which means we'll be solving differential equations in this form here where g of x is a non-zero function. So we'll call the non-homogeneous differential equation equation one and then the differential equation given in this form here where the right side is equal to zero is called the homogeneous differential equation corresponding to equation one or the associated homogeneous differential equation. So we'll call the homogeneous differential equation equation two. And the variation of parameters method states that if we're given a differential equation in this form here where p, q, and g are continuous on an open interval and y sub one and y sub two are linearly independent solutions to equation two, the homogeneous differential equation, then a particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation is given by big Y sub P and this formula here. And therefore, the general solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation would be Y of X. So to begin the derivation, we'll assume that Y sub C, given by this sum, is a complementary function of equation one and the general solution to equation two, again, where equation one is the non-homogeneous differential equation and equation two is the homogeneous differential equation. And y sub one and y sub two are a fundamental set of solutions. So our goal here is to find two solutions, u sub one and u sub two, such that y sub p is a particular solution to equation one. So what we'll do next is find the first and second derivatives of big Y sub P and then perform substitution into equation one. But before we do this, we are going to make one important assumption. We're going to assume that U sub one prime times Y sub one plus U sub two prime times Y sub two is equal to zero. And this assumption will simplify our derivatives as well as help us find U sub one and U sub two. So to find our first derivative, we'll have to find the derivative of the first term and the second term in big Y sub P. To do this, we'll have to apply the product rule to each term. So the derivative of this term is equal to the sum of these two terms. And the derivative of the second term is equal to the sum of the second two terms. But now if we take a look at our assumption, notice that U sub one prime times Y sub one, which is the same as this term, plus u sub two prime times y sub two, which is this term, is equal to zero. And therefore, the first derivative of big Y sub P simplifies to the sum of these two terms. Which does make it easier to find our second derivative. The derivative of this first term requires a product rule, giving us the sum of these two terms. And the derivative of the second term gives us the sum of these two terms. So now that we have y, y prime and y double prime, we'll now perform substitution into equation one. So here's equation one. And now notice that y double prime is here. And then we have p of x times y prime. Here's y prime. And then we have q of x times y and here's y. And here's where the algebra gets a little tricky. What we're going to do now is eliminate the parentheses. We'll distribute p of x and distribute q of x and then rearrange the terms forming this equation here. Notice how all of these terms here had a common factor of u sub one and all these terms here had a common factor of u sub two. But remember that y sub one and y sub two were particular solutions to the homogeneous differential equation, which means all of this is equal to zero, and so is all of this. And therefore, this simplifies very nicely to the sum of these first two terms must equal g of x. So we're going to use this equation and then our assumption to solve this as a system of equations and we'll solve this for u sub one and u sub two, the two functions we're looking for. So we'll solve this as a system using Kramer's rule and then integrate to find u sub one and u sub two. Notice when solving the system, we'll be able to solve for u sub one prime 
and u sub two prime, but we still have to find the antiderivatives to find u sub one and u sub two. So let's go ahead and set this up using Kramer's rule. Notice how I did change order of these equations. Equation one is now the assumption, and equation two is the equation that we derived. And now when we set this up using Kramer's rule, notice how the two by two determinants in the denominator end up being the Ronskians of y sub one and y sub two. And then looking at the two by two determinants in the numerator, notice for y sub one prime, we would have zero minus y sub two times g of x, given here. And then for y sub two prime, we would have y sub one times g of x minus zero, which we see here. So notice here on the left we have u sub one prime and u sub two prime as this quotient, but because we're after u sub one and u sub two, we'd have to integrate both sides of the equation, which would give us this formula here for u sub one and this formula here for u sub two. Remember these are the two functions that we're after in order to find our particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. So now we have everything we need. Here's big Y sub P, and now we know a formula for U sub one and U sub two using the method of variation of parameters. So to summarize one more time, to use the variation of parameters method to solve a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation, we can find a particular solution using this formula here for big Y sub P, and then once we have big Y sub P, we can form the general solution using y of x given here. Now that we've derived this formula, we'll now look at several examples. I hope you found this helpful.